scientists may have just solved one of the greatest mysteries in human evolution. At the southern edge of Siberia, where the Altai Mountains rise into cool forests and limestone ridges, lies Denisova Cave. Inside this cavern, scientists once expected only the usual bones of Ice Age animals. Instead, they found a window into the deepest human past. From a small toe bone in this cave, researchers recovered a complete genome of a Neanderthal woman who lived around 120,000 years ago. They labelled this specimen Denisova V, but she is more commonly referred to as the Altai Neanderthal woman to avoid confusion. She became the key to one of the most remarkable stories in prehistory, the transmission of a rare blood group type from a Neanderthal lineage into Denisovans, and eventually into the ancestors of modern Papuans and Aboriginal Australians thousands of miles to the south. This remarkable story, teased out through ancient DNA rather than fossil anatomy, helps explain how populations adapted to the harsh cold of Siberia later contributed genetic traits that supported survival in warm, disease-rich tropical environments. It offers a new narrative of early human movement, a north-to-south chain of genetic inheritance that began among Neanderthals in the Altai region roughly 100 to 120,000 years ago and ultimately helped empower humans who settled the tropical regions of Southeast Asia and the distant continent of Sahul. It also demonstrates that human migration was never a simple story of modern humans replacing archaic peoples. Instead, it was a complex choreography of contact, interbreeding, and genetic exchange. The Altai Neanderthal woman is evidence that small fragments of Neanderthal biology survive in populations thousands of miles and many tens of thousands of years removed from her own lifetime. The Altai Neanderthal lived in or around Denisova Cave in a period when Neanderthals and Denisovans shared the high-altitude forests of the Altai Mountains. Her remains consist of a single toe bone, yet from that fragment, scientists recovered a complete nuclear genome. Genetically, the Altai Neanderthal woman belonged to a deeply divergent Neanderthal lineage. She and her relatives in the Altai region formed one of the earliest branching lines in the Neanderthal family. They were isolated. The genome shows that her parents were closely related, perhaps half-siblings, a sign of a small population living in a rugged environment far from the large networks of Western Neanderthals. It was this isolation that preserved an unusual set of genetic traits. Among these was a rare variant of the RHD and RHCE genes, which together define RH, blood group systems. This variant, identified in the genome of the Altai Neanderthal woman, is extremely rare in the rest of the world today. It is, however, found with surprising frequency among indigenous Australians and Papuans. The direct path that connects these populations begins with interbreeding between this Neanderthal group and their Denisovan neighbours. The RHD and RHCE genes influence how red blood cells present surface proteins. Variation at these genes affects immune function, pregnancy compatibility and response to certain pathogens. In the Altai Neanderthal woman and in the Denisovan genomes recovered from the same cave, researchers discovered an unusual RHD structure called D3 type 4. This pattern does not occur commonly in modern Eurasian or African populations. Only in Sahul, the ancient continent that once connected what is now Australia and New Guinea, does the old variant persist. The most direct explanation is that this blood group variant was passed from an Altai Neanderthal into the local Denisovan population through interbreeding sometime around 120,000 years ago. The hybrid Denisovans then travelled south, bringing this immune-related variant with them and around 20% Neanderthal genetics. Later, when modern humans encountered these Denisovans in Southeast Asia, the variant entered the growing human population and eventually reached those who crossed into Sahul. This narrative is not speculation, but rather an interpretation supported by genetic signatures. Denisovan genomes from Denisova Cave show clear ancestry from local Neanderthals. The introgressed segments are more closely related to the Altai Neanderthal woman than to Western Neanderthals from Croatia or Russia. The Neanderthal genetic contribution was therefore local and early. The Denisovans who carried these Neanderthal blood group genes 
represent the ancestral population that gave rise to the Denisovan line found in modern Southeast Asians and Pacific Islanders. This is a remarkable legacy. A single Neanderthal individual from the Siberian mountains passed down a variant of one blood group system that survives today in people who live thousands of miles away in tropical forests and coastal islands. To understand why this blood group type may have mattered, it helps to imagine the environment of the Altai region 100,000 years ago. Climate shifted frequently between cold and temperate conditions. The Denisova Neanderthals endured, hunting red deer, gazelle and wild horses, and gathering edible plants in short summers. Winters could be bitterly cold, driving humans to seek deep caves for shelter. In this setting, a strong immune system was essential. Archaeological evidence suggests that Neanderthals, like modern humans, endured infectious disease. Blood group variants can influence susceptibility to certain pathogens and regulate immune responses. The retention of unusual RHD and RHCE types in a small Neanderthal community suggests that these variants may have conferred survival advantages. When Denisovans acquired the variant from their Neanderthal neighbours, they inherited not only a blood type, but a biological toolkit that could support survival in varied environments. This genetic foundation allowed their descendants to succeed in colder mountain zones and later in tropical river valleys where new pathogens prevailed. The warming climate created opportunities for migration. Around 120,000 years ago, global temperatures rose in what scientists call the last interglacial. Glaciers retreated, forests expanded, and the harsh interior of Asia briefly became more hospitable. The high mountain corridors leading from the Altai toward northern China would have supported larger populations of game. Rivers such as the ILI and the Yellow created passageways that allowed small groups to disperse southward. These conditions likely encouraged Denisovan groups, now admixed with Neanderthals, to explore new lands. Their movement was not a single event, but a gradual process following seasonal game, shifting forests and climate cycles. Along the way, some groups settled in the highlands of the Tibetan Plateau. Others continued along the riverine corridors southward toward the limestone mountains of southern China. The discovery of a Denisovan jaw from the Tibetan Plateau demonstrates that Denisovan populations reached high-altitude regions far south of the Altai. The discovery of a Denisovan-like molar in Laos, isolated in a cave among limestone towers and tropical forests, confirms that Denisovan groups penetrated deep into Southeast Asia, likely long before modern humans arrived. These early travellers carried with them their inherited Neanderthal blood group variant, as well as other genes, likely conferring resistance to new pathogens. The tropical belt of Southeast Asia at this time would have presented Denisovans with abundant resources, but also new pressures. Genetic defences that helped Neanderthals contend with Eurasian pathogens may have been adaptable enough to influence responses to tropical diseases. Such traits could have been preserved by natural selection in the tropics. The persistence of the RHD variant in Sahul suggests that it may have conferred some advantage that helped early populations survive after their arrival. These advantages were not limited to immunity. Denisovan ancestry in modern humans is associated with variation in metabolism and physiological responses to hypoxia. Such genes might have helped Denisovans live at high altitudes in Tibet and allowed their modern human descendants to do the same. The fact that the Tibetan Denisovan jaw and the Altai materials share ancestry underscores the flexibility of Denisovan biology across multiple environments. Once in Southeast Asia, Denisovans would have confronted new ecological zones that demanded different ways of living. The tropical forest required new hunting strategies, plant processing techniques, and possibly new forms of shelter. However, their long history of occupation in the Altai, where they shared rugged highlands with Neanderthals, may have given them resilience. The southward movement of Denisovan groups was likely incremental. As the climate cooled after the last interglacial tropical and subtropical zones became refuge areas, offering stability compared to the frigid north. Denisovan lineages increasingly concentrated in these southern regions. 
In modern studies, this southern Denisovan lineage is known as D2 and is modelled as having 10 to 20% Neanderthal ancestry. In fact, you could say they were Hyreids. The southward migration of Denisovans set the stage for interbreeding with the ancestors of Aboriginal Australians and Papuans. When human populations moved into Asia sometime around 50,000 to 60,000 years ago, they encountered Denisovans in Southeast Asia. Interbreeding was not a single event, but a process repeated many times across different regions. During these contacts, Denisovan immune genes, including those ultimately derived from Neanderthals, likely offered modern humans adaptive benefits. These gene exchanges may have improved resistance to unfamiliar pathogens. The signature of these ancient encounters is most clearly preserved in the populations of Sahul, where the Denisovan-derived RHD and RHCE variant still exists. And now this is perhaps the most important lesson from the genetic history of the Altai Neanderthal woman. Her blood type was not merely a personal feature, it became part of a much larger human story. The biological legacy of her small Neanderthal community travelled across continents and shaped the health and survival of people living in tropical forests and isolated islands far from her homeland. The survival of this rare Neanderthal variant in Aboriginal Australians and Papuans also highlights the importance of isolation. After entering Sahel over 37,000 years ago, the ancestors of these populations remained largely separate from other human groups. Their genes were not overrun by later migrations, as happened across much of Eurasia. The archaic immune variant was therefore maintained at higher frequency. This long chain of inheritance also supports a deeper understanding of human evolution. Humans are not isolated lineages, but branches that braided together repeatedly, exchanging genes and strategies. The Denisovans inherited Neanderthal blood types. Modern humans inherited Denisovan variants. The survival of these traits in Sahul shows that hybridization had real biological consequences. The Altai Neanderthal woman, therefore, is not simply an ancient individual preserved in bone. She represents one node in a web of genetic exchange that transformed what it meant to be human. Her blood type is a thread that connects Ice Age Siberia to the tropical jungles of Southeast Asia and the shores of Australia. The story of the Altai Neanderthal woman underscores how ancient DNA has rewritten our understanding of human prehistory. It shows that small isolated populations can leave a permanent mark on distant branches of humanity. It reveals that adaptations forged under cold Siberian skies can later support survival in tropical forests. It also demonstrates that the path of human evolution cannot be understood as a straight line. It involves migrations that move both north and south, interactions that blur the boundaries between distinct species, and genetic exchanges that remain hidden until modern science uncovers them. When the toe bone of the Altai Neanderthal woman was found, few could have guessed that this small fragment would reveal such a sprawling story. Yet here, written within the molecule of her blood group genes, is a long journey from a Neanderthal woman in a cold cave to the vibrant cultures of ancient Sahul. Her legacy lives in the veins of people who may never have heard her name, yet carry within them the biological memory of climates and lands she never saw. It is a reminder that the human story is a shared one, woven across continents and through time, shaped by partnerships as ancient as our species. Through the Altai Neanderthal woman, we glimpse not only the complexity of our past, but also the resilience and adaptability that define us. Her blood is, in a sense, still ours. Please click on these links to explore on this subject and thank you for watching.